Hi guys, I um, said that I would do a video about the contracts that we received from the school in regards to flexi schooling. So I have kind of 10, min 10 minutes free, but I thought that I would just quickly sit down and just film a video about what a contract says. I think the easiest way to do it is just to read um, each point of the contract and just go through each point as I read it. Um, some of them I don't really need to say anything about, some of them there were questions that I had and I asked the school so I'll discuss that as it goes on but I don't want this video to be very long so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, so this is agreement with parent in relation to flexi schooling. Um, so the first point is just about the day the school starts and which days she'll be doing a week um, and that this will carry on till the end of autumn term which I was quite impressed with because I thought it would be like a termly review um, but they've actually committed to it to the end of um, the end of the year so that's good um, it says this is subject to change should either the school or the parent make a request but all any changes must be agreed by both parties and um, so I had questions about whether that would include withdrawing her um, in terms of whether if they didn't agree to me home school and her full time whether that would be a problem and it wouldn't obviously withdrawal was something different it was more if the days needed to change or the times needed to change um and i'm quite glad that it, you know it, it works well for both of us because it's both parties so if they wanted to change it but i said actually that doesn't work for us you know they wouldn't do that be able to do that either because i haven't agreed to it so um yeah and i spoke to them a bit about if the school want to withdraw as well um, a bit about withdrawal actually comes up later, but I'll just say now if the school wants to withdraw, I asked about whether there'd be a decent amount of notice just for Miriam's sake so that, so that she's not just kind of thrown out, but she has time where I can prepare her and tell her kind of what's going to happen next. Um, and they're absolutely on board with that. And they said actually for us to withdraw will be last, last stage after lots of communication, lots of meetings, trying to resolve any issues there might be. Obviously, we expect there not to be any issues, but if there were... Um, withdrawing would be kind of last kind of end of the road uh kind of um thing that would happen uh what's next um so it, the beginning so the next point was just about um the the first week of term they had uh settling in sessions which were on different days to her normal days and it was just that she's allowed to attend those even though they're on different days um, so on days that Miriam will be educated off site, so the, the days that I'll be home educating her, she'll be recorded on the register as C, which is an authorised absence, um, but only if the activities meet the legislative requirements and the school has received confirmation of what has taken place. Um, so obviously I have questions about this because I was like, what are you requiring me to do? And kind of what if? you know, on the days that she's marked as, a, you know, we're homeschooling, but we just decide to take a day off or we decide not to do much formal learning that day, what happens then? Um, and they were kind of like, you know, we're not going to be looking at every single day and every single minute and what you're doing on each day. It's more just general progress. I think it's more if they have concerns about her learning and if they have concerns about her progression, they'll then bring that forward. Um, they're not going to be checking in with me every single day to make sure that I'm doing X, Y and Z. Um, things about that come up a bit later as well. Um, and then obviously she'll be marked absent on the, if, if she's absent for a sickness or whatever, that'll be um, uh, marked in the normal way. And uh, yeah, the same if kind of she's absent because she's ill, I have to contact the school in the same normal way as if she was there full time, which is fine. Um, Miriam is invited to attend special events which fall outside the normal arrangements, e.g. trips, assemblies, sport events. Um, so I was really pleased they put this in actually. So they were basically like, you know, if we have someone come into the school to do a special assembly, she can just come in for that assembly and then come home. Um, if she, they have someone come in for an hour to do like a little workshop or cooking with them, um, on the days that she's not already there, I can send her in if I want to. I don't have to, but if I want to, I can. Um, so that's just really lovely because it means it's special events that happen throughout the year. She's not going to miss out on. They're not just like, no, these are your days and you're chosen to homeschool the other days. And that's that. They're kind of um, really putting her first in all this and actually really um, kind of putting her education first. And if something will benefit her and they want her involved in something, they'll invite us along. But at the same time, I don't have to. Um, you know, if it's something that we're not really that into and I'm not bothered about, but, you know, she's not going to miss out basically on school trips and, and special events and things um 
so the next one was just about absence again that school will follow up if she's absent and I haven't called which is the same as you know every normal pupil um if the parent chooses to employ someone to educate their child I'm then responsible for checking that they can work with children their DBS and stuff which is fine um, I'm not planning to do that, but it, you know, they wanted to put it in the contract, that's fine. Um, a planning meeting will take place between the parent and the school to ensure that Miriam achieves her potential and to promote good home school relationships. Evidence of plans relating to education activities and evidence of work at home will be required to support the assessment of the process. So again, I kind of asked, what is this going to look like? Because I didn't want just like lots of arduous paperwork for me and lots of sending things in. And I said, you know, there are some days that we do she reads a book and that's what we've done all day because she's just not really that into learning that day and we're kind of flexible and we work with her um and there are days that we do like way more than that kind of actually follows on to the next point as well actually i'll read the next point because it's basically about the same thing on the days that miriam is educated at home it's expected that she'll be complete 45 minutes of phonics reading and writing 45 minutes of maths based activities and some topic based activities each day so I had a real chat with them about this because I was like, it's actually unrealistic for um, to do 45 minutes of phonics. And that's not sit down learning. I was always aware of that. You know, they said if I put the washing out and we count the pegs as the laundry goes on the line, that's maths. <laughs> and if we do that for 20 minutes, that's 20 minutes of our of our maths. Um, but even then, even with doing that, I didn't want to be tied down to having to do this 45 minutes because, you know, a day last week, for example, she... I got her to read a book as part of her morning basket and we didn't do anything else after that because she was just getting upset. I was getting frustrated. It wasn't working. And I said, OK, it's enough. And I gave that example to them and they said, yeah, that's absolutely right. That's what you should have done. That's what we expect. Um, so in talking with them, they really made me quite relaxed about the fact that it's in the contract because kind of the local authorities say this is how much every child should be doing. But they're not really you know they, you know they said they laughed about it they said you know you've only done 15 minutes today off with your head sort of thing they're not going to be like that and um it will just be based more on her progress and if she's behind in something i might need to they might say you need to be spending more time with this um on this at home um and then in terms of the ways that i submit evidence she's got a little book in her book bag that we can communicate with the school in so i'm going to put things in that as kind of on a Friday so they can see on a Monday what she did the previous week but also there's an online system where I can upload photos and upload little notes to the teachers and things like that so we'll use that as well but it's not expected that I do that every single day and put in every single activity we do just kind of the main kind of brush over the general activities that we have done that week or that day um so the class teacher and or the early years foundation stage coordinator will liaise with a parent um, to provide broad topics for the work um, but will not set mark or give feedback on specific tasks so this is kind of about the fact that um, when they do topics at school it's it's best we kind of want it to be that we do the same topic at home just so she's got continuity um, and so they'll kind of tell me what topic they're doing but they're not going to mark her work and send work back from the school to to for us to do for her that's my responsibility to get the work done um, the school will notify the local authority of the flexi school arrangements, so they've, they've told the local authority about it, which I'm fine with. Um, if the parent wishes to end the arrangement, they can do this by informing the head teacher and ensuring a full time equivalent provision for Miriam. So I just asked them, would this include full time homeschooling? Because that's what if we ended the flexi school arrangement, we would go into full time home education. They said, yeah, absolutely, that's included. It's just a letter to the head teacher, like I said before. Um, if the head teacher becomes unable to approve home educated part of the flexi schooling arrangement, then the school will work to engage with the parents to resolve the concerns about child's education at the end of the, um, or end the arrangement. Again, this kind of conversation I had with them and they said that ending the arrangement will be way down the line of having lots of conversations with me, lots of meetings, trying to resolve things. And we don't anticipate that happening it's more that if you know i was really not educating her she was really behind i wasn't working with the school i was kind of making lots of problems and they were really trying to fix those problems they can then withdraw but we don't anticipate that happening so that's fine um 
Disputes will hopefully be resolved informally, but always in accordance with school's complaints procedures. So again, if I have a problem, I need to go through the, the complaints procedure, but hopefully it won't get to that. I can just chat to the teacher. Um, the above agreement is intended to meet the needs of Miriam and the school is ensuring that she receives an effective and enjoyable education. So it's for her best interest. We all want the same thing. We want her to enjoy being educated. We want her to be educated well. Um, the arrangements will be reviewed at the end of autumn term or sooner if required. Um, and that's the end, signed by the parent, the school and the date. Um, so, yeah, I was. there were a bit of concerns that I had, but in talking to them, they're super relaxed. So I chatted to the head of early years. I chatted to uh, her school teachers because they did a home visit um, and they put my mind at complete rest about what they're expecting me to do and I'm sure I will do more videos and update you throughout the year about how it's going and if there are any issues hopefully not <laughs> hopefully it goes really well hopefully they're not going to make problems about me doing kind of not the right amount of minutes I don't think so from talking to them it doesn't sound like that the amount of minutes I do a day is what they're interested in they're interested in how Miriam is learning and whether she's progressing um, and whether she she is where she needs to be for her age which I am on board with and completely fine with. So I hope that was interesting and helpful and I've just gone a little bit over 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, so that was the contract. And if you've got any questions, obviously comment below and I will try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching guys, bye.